Hello everyone and welcome to Coffee Pods. It's brilliant to be with you where together we are exploring um, a topic that is, I suppose, relatable to everybody and that is inner healing. This is something we are looking together at the Christian Healing Academy uh, and we just thought doing a podcast on it uh, would be a more informal and helpful way to have a conversation around this topic. So I'm joined by Wes as usual. Great to be back with you, Wes. Yeah, great. We've all survived the summer and here we are. <laughs> we have indeed. So um, I've got some questions for you. OK. Um, I know you'll have some great input. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just before we start, I just want to let you know, those of you who are listening, that you can also head over to Acorn Christian Live, where uh, Wes and I have a, we just do a short reflection, don't we, Wes, and opportunity yeah. for prayer. But why don't we start with some questions? That's okay. What want to hear so <laughs> inner healing um yeah. i'm thinking here maybe about wounds things that might happen to us okay how do we become so wounded like wh what are those things that are happening to us that leave us wounded i mean it's a great question isn't it because um you know you have look at a, a newborn baby you know mother's arms and all that sort of stuff and you think what could possibly happen you know and then life happens. Um, we get wounded because we love and because we trust and because we hope and because we believe and we rely on other people. And then, um, as the Bible says in uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So there are things in, in lives which, you know, in the end, they don't turn out in the way that we wanted them to not just disappointment but sometimes you know relationships events and it becomes like a wound that that like a thorn if you like that gets into us and just stays there so a bit like if you've got a splinter in your finger you think oh it's only a little one until you catch it and then it just keeps getting your attention and of course you know if it's a big splinter then it really is painful and every, every time you touch that part or move that part, you experience again the pain and, and the whole thing. So what happens to us is that the, the wounds of life, the, yes, the disappointments, the, perhaps the way we've been treated by other people, the things, you know, we used to say sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And how wrong is that? Because, you know, yes, sticks and stones will uh, hurt your bones, but actually wounds come from some of the words that are said to us, some of the things that are done to us. And it can be um, anything that appears to be to other people quite trivial in childhood. Um, I was talking to somebody about I was just in, in a message. I was just talking about the picking of teams, okay. you know, and, and, you know, the best picked the first and the second best picked the second and he and in the end there were just a group of people at the end who were just left that nobody really wanted <laughs> and and I was I was just telling the story and and I could see that in the meeting it really affected somebody because suddenly that feeling of being not wanted yeah. had left a, a, a wound within them that they'd carried all the way through life and into other relationships mm -hmm. and so it's because of things like that that we we accumulate these wounds. Yes, some can be self-inflicted. Mm. Some can be inflicted by circumstance that maybe other people didn't even know anything about, yeah. but you know they did. But you take everything from separation and divorce, uh, the unexpected loss of a, a child or a parent or a friendship, and suddenly we're carrying deep within us a wound that, not only just shapes the past but it shapes the present and it's going to shape the future as well yeah it does absolutely and i think it, i just find it interesting that you mentioned love trust and hope because it kind of feels as though the, the wounds that people are carrying or, or experience is quite a personal thing um so like yes we feel we feel empathy or compassion don't we towards other mm. people's wounds but most of the time, these things are really personal. And I wonder if that makes it harder. You know, like what or who I love is a personal thing. Where I put my hope is a personal thing. Yes. Um, I mean, I was I, I once did a thing with uh, in our church and we had a little group. It was uh, called Mosaic. Mm. 
and it was about piecing together lies broken apart by separation or divorce and I just got a whole group of people together and I, I just said to them um just tell me your story and I have to say they're all Christians I've never been in a Christian meeting where people have laughed and sworn so much at the oh, same really? time <laughs> yeah it was absolutely brilliant and they told me their story and I remember one person said to me that you know they'd been a disciple of Jesus for lots you know many 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 years but when they told their story about their husband walking out for a, a newer model she said you know even now it, you could feel the reality of that even though they'd forgiven and journeyed with it um the the wounds that we acquire in life they they are very personal and because of that they they impact us personally and hurt personally sometimes very deeply that's right yeah that's helpful and so just thinking then i mean obviously we're not going to pull it pull apart each other's wounds but um i'm sure we can think of a wound of our own like and if you're listening you probably have something that's come to mind and heart but yeah are there any references to our inner wounds in the bible well yeah it's funny you should mention it because you think about it the things that trigger them can be a memory situation an event or something and of course the, the truth is that in the bible they they're living life as we are you know they have to put their trousers on one leg at a time if they have such a thing you know it's not a magical sort of disney type kingdom they still felt so i mean in a healing of the bible pick one i mean honestly you know how about thomas the disciple where did he get this idea that he couldn't really trust or believe yeah i mean who told him that you know, you think all that he'd seen about Jesus, everything that he'd done. And I wonder if Jesus picked Thomas just because he was like that <laughs> to make to say to those of us who carry that sort of tendency, hey, you're included. Come on. You that. know, <laughs> you know, um, Judas, how did Judas get to the decision about betrayal mm. and 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 the money thing and whatever? Because he didn't sort of sit there one during the Sermon on the Mount and think, do you know what? It'd be really good if I ended up being a traitor. You know, <laughs> I mean, um, that was the journey that he was on. He was carrying something out of a previous life, out of his pre, uh, the previous life he'd lived. Um, Martha, take Martha. You know, um, Jesus, tell my sister to come and get on in the kitchen <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Where did she get that from? You know, what shaped her? What did she carry? in her that made that the thing that she wanted you know to uh, yeah I, I don't know about Martha I don't know whether was she controlling was she just really knocked off whatever however can I say about Martha she changes because in the story of Lazarus it's Martha who goes to Jesus and asks him for help not Mary funnily enough uh, yeah and so I just want to say for all the Marthas hey you got a space with Jesus and he knows how to journey uh, with you. Moses, I mean, Moses, apparently, I mean, let's face it. Uh, there's a lovely moment at the burning bush when God has to say to Moses, the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And actually up to that moment, Moses' father's God have been the gods of Egypt. Yeah. Because that's where he grew up. Yeah. So suddenly a false story. A different thing that has shaped him and of course uh, you know nicodemus he comes in secret to jesus uh but there's an there's an itch that he can't scratch mm. but he's lived all his life one thing being shaped by one thing like moses did like we do yeah. and suddenly he encounters a freedom moment and so i think in that sense you can probably just look through. I mean, the Apostle Paul apparently wasn't an easy guy to get on with. You know, um, Ezekiel, you read him and he looks a little bit, you know, cranky. Jeremiah <laughs> looks a bit depressed, you know. And, and then you look at yourself in the mirror and think, yeah, I'm probably one of them as well. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it does make you go, oh, that's why they acted the way they did. And and it's totally true. For Like, you realise only in your own life, you're like, oh, is that what's causing me to behave this way or react this way? And it's just really interesting how you, I mean, you've listed what, like five or six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you just think, yeah, we're so alike. But that's yeah. so reassuring. <laughs> well, it, it is. And because and, you know, it's a great story of um, 
uh, with Moses and uh, and Aaron and and Miriam, you know, and they have a real set too, you yeah. know, like like a real proper family sort of thing. And there are ang- you know, there's a fair amount of angst and stuff about what's going on. And of course, the truth is that for us, the the wounds that we carry, they lie dormant until a moment comes, yeah. a memory comes we meet somebody from our past and suddenly we're not just um looking at our history we are reliving the moment of pain Uh, and just for those who are listening to to the podcast lisa i do appreciate for some people some of those moments uh, have been abusive absolutely and and i wouldn't want in any way to minimize the fact that for some um i talked to a um I was in a meeting, we were talking about the Lord's Prayer, Our Father. And I spoke to somebody afterwards and they said, every time I hear that prayer, it brings pain to me because my father was not a good man. And they told me a story and, and I, and in the end, I had to to just journey with them to do that. So a memory, um, a moment, an encounter, a situation, um, you know, suddenly it triggers it and we're all back there again. Yeah, that's right because the thorn is still there and it's still living and inner healing was about how we get rid of the thorn how how christ draws the thorn out and the poison with it Mm. so that we can begin to live a life of freedom again that's amazing so that saying that sounds like yes yes please cool but obviously it can be difficult and people might not even know where to start um i mean you've said that even um, thinking about it or memories can trigger the feeling mm. so it might be quite a scary mm. thought doing this but mm. how do uh, we go from living in this false story and, and drawn into this freedom this living well I mean it is I mean it's really interesting isn't it when the BBC or, or any of the news channels they run a story that is, is quite traumatic they put a sort of a, a thing and say look if you've been affected by this yeah. get in touch with these people you know um, and I would say um, if some of this has 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 resonated with you then for, there are two good things the first is there is a loving god who's w- ready and willing to draw alongside and help and bring healing and secondly if it's come to you and it's live maybe it's god saying now's the time to deal with this you know because you could have sat through something and gone yeah i know but whatever yeah. But maybe today you're sitting there thinking, yes, but where's this hurt so much? Lisa, this really hurts, you know. Well, maybe that's God saying, why don't we deal with this now? So what I would say is this. One, it is a bit like heart surgery. It needs to be done carefully. And in, in, in a sense, it needs to be done. Um, I was going to use the word professionally. You know, I didn't quite mean it in that sense. But, you know, it's not just, oh, I've got a screwdriver. Let me see if I can fix your heart with it. This is something that really needs some prayerful and careful uh, and compassionate handling as well. And and what it involves is us bringing this false story, this fake reality, uh, into the hands of loving God. And that can be scary for some people because it's defined who they are sometimes for years yeah. talk to somebody who had lived a false story for 60 years wow. and and sometimes it can feel scary because if i let this go what have i got left yeah. um but also it, it involves us bring, bringing that story into the presence of god with others and help and them helping us which is is in a sense what we teach in the academy and if anybody's listening and you get to this before the academy you're very welcome to book on it's free you can come and join us and just sit and listen and there could there there is going to be a moment of prayer for you if you want to as well but normally what we would say is you find um, a group of christians who you trust who you love who love you who you are uh, uh, you know are safe with and we journey back and we present the story to christ and we say jesus we're going to need you to come and heal this we need to forgive what we need to forgive but we also need to receive from god what only he can give us which is healing from the heart and so there are plenty of other uh, books on it a lady called agnes sanford was one of the first who put a put some shape to it 
uh, with it. And I think, you know, it's it, there. It's a it's a really necessary part of the the Christian journey and the life journey uh, that we we live uh, together. And I think the other thing is that once the thing I would encourage people is once the thorns out, once the poison is out, then the love of God and the the grace of the Spirit comes in mm. to fill it. So it's not empty, yeah. but it's a full life. Yeah. And and you get hope, not only for the past, but you get hope for the future as well. Mm-hmm. And so I just say, look, if that's you know, if we can be of any help in Acorn, then people can get in touch. We can put you in touch with our healing hubs. But that's the way that um, I go about it. That's yeah, super helpful. Thank you, Wes. Yeah. So, um, you know, re-listen to this if you need to. And as Wes said, if you would like to receive prayer, we do have opportunities. But uh, we're just going to close now. Wes, I'm just going to ask that you pray and bless those who are listening. Mm. Yeah. Father, today our ears have been opened, not just to the story of our past, but to the voice of a loving God who says, now is the time. And so, Lord, for those of us who have ears to hear, who hear that message now, for who this is the the season to leave the thorns and, and, and to receive healing, Lord, I pray blessing on you today in jesus name that you will know that you are incredibly loved by the almighty god and that his son and his spirit are towards you today to bring healing and hope into your life and i pray this in jesus name amen